have projected that the African economies grew by 3.8% in 2022. Uh, this is a slowdown from uh, 2021 of about 4.8% that we recorded. And of course, uh, this slowdown does reflect the uh, accumulation of a number of factors, downside factors that uh, have uh, buffeted the African economies and the global economy more generally. And uh, here we are talking of the spillovers from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, lingering effects of the pandemic, uh, climate risks, uh, tightening global conditions, and many other such factors that uh, really have had a strong and negative impact on Africa's growth. Uh, you recall also that uh, we had uh, strong growth in 2021, which essentially uh, meant that uh, 2022 was going to be a good year uh, as per our earlier projections. But uh, because of these um, aggregate shocks that I uh, have talked about, uh, we now have a slowdown of 3.8% in Africa's growth. And another thing that I need to underscore here uh, is that uh, despite this uh, slowdown, African economies have remained broadly resilient uh, with only one country that recorded negative growth in 2022. Uh, this is a reflection of the policy environment sustaining good policies uh, but also uh, it speaks to uh, the diversity of African economies because within uh, the continent, uh, countries are at different levels of development and growth. Some are more diversified than others and they're able to absorb the shocks uh, much more than those that are less diversified. Uh, but also we have countries that depend mostly on commodity prices, whose prices, commodity products, whose prices rose sharply in 2022 and therefore they benefited from uh, such high prices. But on the negative side, uh, we realized that higher energy costs and food prices that were largely stocked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, also uh, fueled the inflationary pressure, the highest we have seen in more than a decade, uh, you know, and, 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 and speaks to the importance of monetary policy authorities, but also in coordination with fiscal uh, policy to ensure that uh, the transmission mechanism, the, the pass-through effects of global shocks uh, is limited to African economies. Uh, and the rise in inflation, if I may just uh, add on this, uh, is that it has translated into increased number of those people that are in absolute poverty. Uh, we estimate that about 15 million people uh, were <clears throat> driven into absolute poverty. And that adds uh, to the already large number that we saw in 2021 and 2022, I mean 2020 and 2022. Uh, so cumulatively, really, we are uh, expecting that uh, these shocks are having a toll uh, on lives and livelihoods. And that's why it is important that African economies, with the support of uh, multilateral uh, development institutions, including the bank, uh, should work hand in hand to support, especially the most vulnerable groups, to weather the shocks uh, of this uh, uh, to weather the storm of these shocks. Uh, and so we, we continue to uh, leverage on our abilities uh, to continue to speak uh, to African governments uh, on the importance of creating a conducive environment to uh, reverse some of these losses that we have experienced uh, over the past three years or so. The resilience that we see uh, in 2022, uh, even though there was a slowdown, but you recall, I said that uh, uh, 53 of the 54 African economies posted the positive growth uh, is that we will continue in 2023. And this is the, uh, against the background of continuing tightening of global conditions, but also in an environment where we have seen uh, that many economies, especially those in advanced countries, uh, will go into recession. And yet we are projecting a stabilization of economic growth at about 4% for both this year and next. Uh, against about 2% globally, uh, which is nearly double uh, uh, the, the, the global average. Africa's uh, growth of 4% is nearly double the global average. So this resilience will continue, but uh, we must also recognize that uh, there is continuing uh, uncertainty globally, really. And our projections are 
essentially coming with the uh, cautious optimism uh, in the sense that uh, uh, until we see normalization of conditions across board, uh, Africa does not operate in isolation. It's linked uh, to many other countries and regions. So until we see normalization of conditions in uh, partner countries, especially those that we trade mostly with, China is now opening up uh, after three years of close down due to one, one, one <clears throat> zero, zero COVID policy. Uh, so we, we, we expect that uh, uh, growth uh, will remain uh, around 4%, uh, but subject to uh, normalization of the, of the global conditions. Uh, but also, I must emphasize this, that uh, domestically, we must also address other, other, other factors that uh, could uh, negate this projection that we are making for, 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 for economic growth, one of which is uh, we have a list of countries that will be going into elections uh, this year and next. And usually around election time, there's a lot of uncertainty regarding the sustainability of policies. So in cases where the risk of policy reversal is heightened uh, in those countries, they might see an outflow of investment, uh, but also uh, generally uh, subdued demand uh, due to the uh, uncertainty that comes with the, with the elections. But uh, we also see flashpots uh, of conflicts in the certain uh, regions of the continent, in, in the Sahel, as well as in, in the Horn of Africa. Uh, all these uh, 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 areas and factors that uh, we need to continuously monitor uh, because they have the potential to affect our projections uh, going forward. And finally, if I may just emphasize on this, is that uh, to the extent that uh, uh, countries have the ability to support those that are affected by the shocks, uh, we need to continue to emphasize the importance of uh, uh, providing uh, adequate social safety nets uh, to limit the numbers uh, of those that could slip further into poverty. Because as we speak, uh, the price uh, prices of commodities, including food and energy, are still elevated uh, and are likely to continue uh, to rise uh, in, in view of the continuing uh, war in Ukraine by, by Russia. So <clears throat> to the extent that all these geopolitical risks, climate change risks, and all the other factors uh, remain elevated, uh, Africa's growth could, uh, could, could come down. But we hope that uh, uh, the 4% that we're projecting will persist for at least for the next two years before we can start consolidating on these gains and uh, uh, hope for higher growth, uh, which is important for job creation uh, in the future. <laughs>